Dark Waters, the story I'm about to share with you was told to me by my grandfather. To give you some background information, I was born and raised in Alberta, Canada. I spent my childhood years with my grandparents, as both my mother and father were preoccupied with the carnal pleasures of life. One evening, my grandfather and I found ourselves on the side of the road with a flat tire, and while I stood there holding a flashlight, we began to hear this strange sound coming from the wood line across from us. I had never known my grandfather to be afraid of anything, but that evening, he made me get back into the truck, and we drove the next two to three miles into town on a flat tire. Once we reached the service station, Grandpa changed the tire, and we headed home. Now, never knowing my grandfather to show any fear, I was confused, and I just had to ask him, why did we drive off? That is when he shared this story with me. When he was a young man, no more than 25 years old, he and his best friend Jacob went night fishing in one of the local lakes. As they sat there, anchored near the middle of the lake, they began to hear this sound. Grandpa described it as 100 dogs barking at the same time, and then the loudest howl he had ever heard. This was accompanied by a yelling sound that morphed into something similar to an air raid horn. Then all hell broke loose, and it sounded like two freight trains headed in the same direction, plowing through the woods. Suddenly, out of the wood line stepped the largest wolf they had ever seen, rising up on his back two legs and walking like a man. This thing was massive, and it stood there with his back turned to them, staring into the woods. In the spur of the moment, an ape-like creature jumped out of the wood line, his mammoth arms stretched high above his head smashing into the wolf, making the most unimaginable sound, a symphony of flesh tearing and bone breaking. The sheer force of the impact catapulted both of them into the water, causing waves to radiate outward, creating chaos on the otherwise smooth surface of the calm lake. The ape-like creature's arms thrashed violently, plunging into the water over and over again in a fit of rage. Then. In one final gesture, it thrusted both arms beneath the surface, twisting, turning, and jerking the head of the wolf from underneath the waves. Then it turned, taking three steps, gliding back into the wood line, and letting out a thundering roar. Grandpa said that ever since that night, he was aware of what dangers truly lurked in the woods, and he made a point of not tempting fate ever again. Have you ever stopped and took a look at your life and wonder, how did I get so low? I have. When Jack Daniels is your best friend, your residence is a cheap hotel room, and your neighbors are pimps and prostitutes, it's safe to say that you've hit rock bottom. I came to Louisiana to get a fresh start, to get away from my problems in upstate New York. What's my problem, you ask? A bookie named Vinny Dollars. An empty house. You see, 24 months ago, I had it all. A beautiful wife and a child on the way. A great job as a harbor master in a beautiful home. And I don't know. It's like somebody put a hex on me. I had the worst run of bad luck. The wheels fell off my entire life. My wife Linda was hit by a drunk driver on the way home. And that night, our unborn child died. A week later, so did Linda. 
Man, I stopped working. Started drinking. Just to numb the pain. Dead. That is how you describe it. It's what I was then, and it's how I am now. In more ways than one. You see, when you don't show up for work for weeks, eventually, they have no choice but to fire you. And I didn't care. Fuck that job. What's a job for? To provide. But who the fuck did I have left to provide for? No one. And then there's Vinny. I bought a few thousand dollars from him, hustled, and paid most of it back to him. But he wanted it all, every last dime. If you ever owe money to a bookie, you know they don't try and kill you at first. They start off by taking shit from you and roughing you up. But when he tried to take Linda's wedding ring, things got ugly, real physical. I lost it, and now they're out for blood. So here I am, in Louisiana, a thousand miles away from them. But my luck has not changed. Got myself this little gig working for a construction company as a supervisor. My job requires that I go out to the wetlands and search for what they call storm hazards, places in the marsh and along the levees, where the next storm could cause a breach and a catastrophic flood. Most of the time, this is done from a helicopter. But there's time you got to go out in the airboat or on an ATV or even on foot. The first time I saw this dog man thing, as you call it, I was on my ATV and alone. I was riding the levee just about 10 miles away from Shell Beach. And the crews were five miles behind me, working to repair a section where a breach occurred during Hurricane Katrina. As I'm riding, I see this black thing up ahead of me, but down the levee to my left, and it's right by the water, laying flat on the ground. At the time, I didn't know what it was. It looked like a big ball of black fur had washed up out of the bayou. And I really didn't give a damn. And I just wanted the day to be over with so I can get home. I only had two hours left, and I was ready to knock off. Now this wasn't weird to me, because you see when you're out here working in the swamps, you see all kind of crazy stuff. Lights in the sky at night, 13 foot long alligators. So I felt it was no threat, but as I'm driving up on this thing doing about 20 miles per hour, it moves, twitching at first, then gets up on all fours like a dog. But this thing is big, bigger than any dog I've ever seen. Then it starts to wiggle its body and water begins to flow off its fur. And I realized this thing is alive for a few seconds i let off the gas to try and get a better look as i was passing by and that's when it looked up at me i can't tell you a whole lot of details about this thing except for it had the largest wolf head i'd ever seen i'm from upstate we have wolves but this wasn't normal the head was way too big it looked like something from a horror movie and then this thing takes off in my direction and in my mind all i could think was you survived the mob in order to get killed by some big wolf in Louisiana. I hit the gas and accelerated, but it ran up the 12 foot levee so fast it was right on me. I was able to get up to 40 miles per hour, but it was still right there. 45 miles per hour, and it was closing in. 50 miles an hour, I'm putting a little space between us. Now I'm at 55 miles an hour. And the ATV only goes up to 60. I'm struggling to keep control of it. But I was able to put a little distance between me and this creature. It chased me for another 600 yards then stopped. When I looked back it was letting out this loud growling roar like nothing I'd ever seen. And it held its paws or hands or whatever those things was to its nose. Afraid I drove until I hit the roadway and then circled back around to get back to the crew. When I got back to my truck I had a drink. I just sat there. Quitting time came. One of the guys noticed that my safety vest was torn in the back. Jokingly, he said, you must have ran into one of them alligators out there while you were piking. To me, that shit wasn't funny. Somehow, that thing had gotten close enough to rip a part of my safety vest. And the next day when we got to the job site, there was a deer head with a piece of my vest hanging out of his mouth and one of the bulldozers. It had a broken window and the door was left open. Everyone in the crew figured it was one of the coon asses down here. Maybe they were pissed off because we were making too much noise. But I knew exactly what it was. This thing had my scent. That bulldozer that the deer head was in was the exact same one I used that prior morning. I got it in the cover for a guy who had a headache. He needed to go back to his truck to get some meds. Two weeks later, I quit the job. After seeing this thing lurking behind some trees while I was using that same bulldozer, I don't know why that thing had it out for me. But my life has been nothing but trouble for the past few years. That thing, whatever it was, was the final straw. A week later, I took a bottle of pills trying to kill myself. But I was saved by the maid in the hotel. 
She called 911 and I woke up in the hospital. Three weeks after that, I got into a fight with a pimp who worked the hotel that I was in. I pulled the gun and put it directly to my right eye. And I begged him to kill me. But he said I was the kind of man that would suffer more if I just kept on living. Fucked up thing is, he was right. To this day, I'm still suffering. Thanks for meeting with me and my family to talk about our encounter with the dog man. What happened to us should be shared with others so they can have knowledge of these creatures and what not to do if they see one of them. My 12 year old son and I were out hunting on the outskirts of our city. It was his first time out and I really didn't expect us to take down anything that day. It was more of a father son outing. We left before daylight Sunday morning and headed to my hunting blind. When we arrived, we sat there until daybreak, having the most interesting conversation about this little girl named Elizabeth. It was shaping up to be an awesome father and son day. Essentially, that was all I wanted, was to spend some time with my son, not what happened next. As the sun began to light up the woods, Josh got excited. He trained his scope out into the clearing, then mumbled, I'm going to get me a buck today. I smiled and reached down for a bottle of water and some beef jerky that was in my backpack and was completely startled when I heard him fire two shots. Looking up, I saw a buck in full stride near the end of the clearing. Right behind it was the largest dog I've ever seen. I need to pause and go back for a second and share what my son told me he saw in the 5-10 to 10 second time frame in which I was fumbling in my backpack looking for beef jerky and water. According to Josh, the buck darted out of the tree line in full stride. He trained the scope. Then he noticed it was being chased by something big and black. Josh described it as a bear with a dog face. He fired two shots at the buck, and one hit the dog man. Oh my God. This thing came to a sliding stop and began smelling the air. Then it stood up on two legs. I'm not sure why it was not able to scent us. In hindsight, I figured it was the scent killer gold that we used. But thank God this thing didn't see us up in that blind. I stood there for a few minutes, sniffing in the air, then walked off into the wood line. Josh and I, now freaking out about what we had just seen, climbed down out of the blind and ran back the 150 yards to the car. When we arrived back at the truck, I could smell the scent of wet dog and old meat. But I was in such a rush to get Josh away from that area that we hopped in quickly and drove off. Arriving at our house, which was only about a mile away from that area, Josh was all questions. What was that, Dad? It looked like a monster. It looked like a werewolf. I simply told him, I have no clue, son. At this point in time, I'm thinking that my son and I have a great story to tell, but we had gotten away from all the danger. That night when my wife and I settled into bed around 11 p.m., I told her what happened and her reaction was not what I wanted or expected. But soon she would realize I was telling the truth. Around 4 a.m., I was woken by a crashing sound outside in the backyard. Then, all I could hear was Josh's footsteps as he entered our bedroom in a full sprint, leaping damn near from the doorway into our bed, saying, it's outside, it's outside. Immediately, I knew by the terror on his face what he was referring to. I stumbled to the floor, rushing from the bed to my closet to grab my shotgun. And after a few twists and turns, I headed to the back of the house towards our sliding gas door, turned on the floodlights, and looked out into the backyard. Scanning the yard, I couldn't see anything. But going outside was not an option, because I saw that thing earlier. And if it was indeed this creature, we would need way more than a shotgun. Just then, my wife startled me asking me what was going on and I turned my back to the door to answer her as I tried to explain to her what Josh was upset about she began to stare past me then the color drained from her face and her eyes got large she screamed and ran back towards the bedroom turning around I could feel this creature's presence and to see it at my home was so terrifying it was right there in the backyard standing on two legs 
hands down by its side, with its palms open. Its fingers are, are claws moving like it was playing a piano. It was panting hard like it had just stopped running. And the stick saliva was dripping from its closed mouth. It looked straight at me through the sliding glass door. And then its ears began to twitch and move. Each moving independently. As I stood there, staring into the eyes of this death machine for what felt like 10 minutes, I didn't know what to do. The glass door wouldn't stop this thing if it wanted to come in my house. And the shotgun wouldn't kill it before it got to me and my family. I can only describe its eyes as being the most intimidating thing I've ever seen. This creature had these piercing yellow eyes with large black pupils. And I felt like it was trying to intimidate me. Like it was trying to make a point to me. All I could think was to show no fear. But my body was trembling. My hands were shaking to the point I dropped the shotgun. That's when it broke eye contact with me, cutting its eyes to the right side of my yard and sniffing the air. Then it took two quick leaps and was gone out of sight. Honestly, I collapsed to the floor. My body was just overwhelmed with adrenaline and I was feeling dizzy. When I entered the bedroom, my wife and son were in the closet with my rifle. And that was how the first night ended, with all us huddled in one bedroom. Me on the floor at the foot of the bed with my shotgun. The following morning, I called into work and went to my neighbor's property to talk to him. Devin is a bit of a wild individual, but he loves my son Josh to death. And I knew if anyone would believe me, it was him. When I arrived, he was drinking beer. Now it's 9 a.m. in the morning, and Devin is known to drink, but not like that. He looked disturbed and worried. As I proceeded to explain to him what I saw last night, his eyes lit up, and I could tell he wanted to share something as well. He stood up, looked me square in the eyes, and said, I saw it last night too. Devin said his dog was killed by some type of large wolf. Now, Devin breeds dogs for a living, and the dog that was killed was a bull massive, and it was his pride and joy. The dog had been torn into pieces, and he witnessed what happened. Devin was distraught. He talked about how there was nothing he could do. He was frozen with fear as his dog was killed. That evening, I told my wife everything Devin and I discussed and tried to reassure her that this was a one-time incident. But again, I couldn't have been any more wrong. That night at 4.15 a.m., I was awakened from my sleep on the sofa by this feeling that something was watching me. You know how it is when you wake up afraid, but not sure what you're afraid of because your senses are not completely intact yet? Well, that is what I was feeling, dread and fear. But it was not from a dream. This fear woke me up from my sleep. Looking around the room, I saw nothing. And I was just about to settle back to sleep when I saw a figure move quickly from the window and towards the back of the house. Then I heard my wife scream. <coughs> And she came running into the living room. It's outside. It's outside. She was terrified. Josh, now awakened from his mother's screams, came barging into the room. And we all huddled there in the living room as I dialed 911. All I could think to tell the 911 operator was someone was trying to break into our home. When the sheriff's deputies arrived, we walked around the house. And on the ground, there were humongous canine prints. And at my bedroom window, the screen was soaking wet with some type of saliva or spit. My wife explained to me that she had woken up because of a scratching sound at the window and saw what looked like a dog-headed creature licking the window screen. As we walked around the house, the, sheriff looked at, the sheriff's deputy looked at me and said, I don't know what was at your house, but I do know it wasn't a person. They assigned extra patrols to our area for that night. And again, we settled in to sleep. I haven't had any new activity to this day, but now on weekends when I'm in my backyard cutting my grass, I get this eerie feeling that something's watching me from the tree line. I don't know if I'm paranoid or if I'm going crazy, 
but I can't shake the feeling that that thing is there, watching me, waiting for an opportunity to get me. I live deep in the bayous of southeast Louisiana, south of Homer. Outside of work, I spend the majority of my time fishing. While out in the bayous, I've had many strange encounters. Bright lights in the sky, strange creatures in the water. But the most frightening experience I had was with the dog man. This happened three weeks ago, on a Saturday morning. I was out fishing with my dog, Buck. Buck is a beautiful German shepherd given to me as a birthday present by my younger brother. That morning was shaping up to be a great day for fishing. The light fog had begun to burn off the lake, and I trolled along the shores casting for redfish. Then I began to troll north of one of the canals. Buck had been laying there on the boat, taking a nap the entire time. As soon as we hit the canal, he scented something. Now this canal is bordered by nothing but marshlands. But up ahead there was a section of the canal that was surrounded by light forest. And beyond that was a roadway. Buck began to bark as we reached the forested area. It was not an aggressive bark, but more of a warning to me that something was up ahead. I decided to move away from the front of the boat. I'm not sure why I did it. I just moved and cranked the rear motor. That is when something large and black moved in the wood line. This, this thing was a massive animal. As it walked, I could see its muscles in its shoulders and its hind legs. It was on all fours. And as I would soon learn, this was no ordinary animal. It shadowed us in a tree line as we moved along. And it seemed to focus on Buck. Buck's warning bark suddenly turned ferocious. Then it turned and stuck its head out of the tree line, showing itself and growling at the same time. This was not a dog. It was some type of large wolf. The growl was deep, deeper than anything I'd ever heard. I could feel the vibrations in my chest, legs, and arms. And to my surprise, Buck was not intimidated. He barked even louder. This head was a wolf head. A black timber wolf is what it looked like. But it was five times bigger than any wolf or dog I had ever seen. My whole encounter was no more than five minutes from start to finish, but it felt like forever. After seeing this giant wolf head poking out from between the trees and this animal trying to intimidate Buck, I was in shock. I just expected to see the head of a big dog, not a wolf. That is when the fear kicked in, and Buck barked at me as if he was saying, Don't you see this big wolf thing? What are you waiting for, stupid go? At least in that moment, that is how I perceived his bark, and I punched it speeding away from the area in the boat. Two weeks later I went back to that area. I asked people who had houses on that same canal if they had seen a big black dog. One man said, son, that ain't no dog. You and I both know that. It comes through here every now and then, but if you don't bother it, it don't bother you. When I was told by my friend that you were not critical of him when he told you about his dogman experience, at first I was skeptical. However after speaking with you I realized that you are the real deal. This encounter I'm going to share with you can be verified by my 19 year old son. Both my son and I are what you call Cajuns here in Louisiana. I spend the majority of my free time hunting and fishing in the bayous of southeast Louisiana. Per our agreement I am not disclosing exactly where this happened, I still have to live and work in this area, but I will do my best to paint a clear picture of the surrounding. It was early August and my son and I had spent the entire day fishing, I have an 18 foot Aluma craft boat with a Yamaha 40 motor. On the front I mounted a trolling motor, 
It is a Minnesota Kota 45 pound thrust battery powered setup. The max speed on this motor with two people on my boat is 12 miles per hour through calm waters. It was just turning dark when our encounter began, the Yamaha 40 motor on my boat was noticed also my son and I always tried to get out of the bayous before dark. As expected the Yamaha 40 was stalling and slow to crank up. As I pressed the ignition she wouldn't turn over. We didn't want to flood the engine so instead we began using the trolling motor to travel along the bayou to head home. It was no big deal we had done this many of times, it did mean that a 20 minute ride through the bayou would now take an hour. We were rounding a bin near the levee when everything went quiet. My son brought it to my attention. Papa listen, he said. Everything is so quiet. There was not a sound, no birds, crickets, no fish splashing, the only sound was the steady hum of the trolling motor. In order for you to understand what happens next I have to explain the area we were in. The levee is for storm surge protection, it's 12 to 15 feet tall in spots, along this waterway. The levee is on our left hand side, on our right hand side is primary forested wetland. The bayou we were traveling down was about 75 yards wide maximum but narrowed down to 35 yards wide in long stretches. We were in a long stretch where it was about 50 yards wide. Like I was saying, it had just turned dark and the area of the bayou we were trolling became extremely quiet. My son was on edge, as he operated the trolling motor on the front of the boat. I can't tell you why, but a sense of fear washed over me, my son was feeling it too as he suggested we try and start the Yamaha motor. We trolled along for another 10 minutes before I started hearing something paralleling us in the wetlands to the right. The movement was loud, but it was low to the ground and I just thought it was a hog working his way through the wetlands. Moving at medium speed, which for this trolling motor was 6-8 miles per hour. I felt uncomfortable and afraid, but not like my life was in danger. That all changed when my son shined the floodlight into the marsh. Eyes were looking back at us, the eye shine was a combination of yellow and gold. They were low to the ground. I been hunting in the marsh my entire life and this size and color eyes shine was not familiar to me. At this point we were in a bit of a situation, we had no weapon. Frankly because until this night I felt no need for one when out fishing in the bayou. The trolling motor was battery operated, so running it at maximum speed of 12 miles per hour would only deplete the battery before we got back to the boat launch. We had an unknown animal following us in the bayou at night. This was evolving to be some straight horror movie type shit. I tried the ignition again on the Yamaha 40, but she would not start. So my son steered us to the far side of the bayou to put some distance between us and this creature. He suggested that I steer the trolling motor while he worked on the Yamaha. Now at the bow, I shinned the floodlight into the marsh again trying to get a better look at the animal. Expecting the eye shine to be low to the ground, at first I saw nothing, but as I fumbled the light a bit it shinned upwards and the eyes we now up higher. Stupidly I slowed the boat down to take a closer look. The animal was staying just outside of the light reach. We had almost come to a complete stop when, it stepped forward to the edge of the bank. What I saw, was only supposed to be a folk story. It was a werewolf, it was jet black, and its eyes were terrifying. The upper body was lean, with pronounced shoulder muscles. It was using its front paw to hold back a tree branch from its face. This thing looked 8 feet tall, its nose was black and moist, and could see the nostrils move as it breath. The snout was longer and wider than anything I have ever seen on a dog. Now completely terrified, turned the motor speed back up, trying to move away. That is when the skin along the ridge of its snout began to wrinkle and it showed its teeth. Then it took a deep breath and began to growl. The fur on its chest shook as it let out the worst sound I ever heard in my life. Although, 
It was a good 45 yards away on the opposite bank. I felt this growl in my internal organs. It was so strong. The level of fear I felt was like nothing I had ever experienced in my life. It was like being a kid again and learning that monsters are real. This fear was so intense, I wanted to jump out the boat and swim to the levee and run. My son, now aware of what was tracking us worked frantically on the Yamaha, trying to get to the fuel filter. This thing walked on its hind legs along the bank for the next 20 yards, before it was forced to cut back into the marsh because of a small cove. Now out of sight, I asked my son, what the situation with the motor was. He had just got the fuel filter out and was flushing it with fresh fuel. He only had to insert it again and reassemble part of the motor. Knowing I had a good 10 minutes before he was done, I turned the trolling motor to its maximum speed. I wanted to make sure that this animal was not able to meet us on the bank once it circled around the cove. For the next few minutes things felt normal, the crickets, birds, and other sounds of the bayou were back again. But this feeling was short-lived as the animal let out a howl, from the back of the cove, almost as to let us know it was still coming for us. We both could hear this thing tearing through the wetland, loud splashes, trees and brushed breaking. It was headed our way and this time at full speed. Nervously, I told my son we need to get that motor going now. Yes sir, almost done, he replied. The sounds were getting closer, shinning the light ahead of the boat I realized that we were not being stalked, but hunted. We were entering a section of the bayou where the waterway narrowed to about 35 yards across. This particular section would only take 3 minutes to navigate with the normal motor. With this trolling motor we were screwed, I felt like a sitting duck as the sound of this thing could be heard rounding the cove and headed straight for us. The sound of my son trying to turn over the motor provided some relief, but she was still not starting. He paused for a second, threw the motor in reverse, hit the ignition, and hot damn she started. We were saved, looking into my son's eyes he was shaken but he never looked back as we sped off. When we arrived at the boat launch, and pulled the boat out the water, my son looked me square in the eye and said, was that a fucking werewolf? Yes it was, it had to be. We talked about it on the ride to the local bar for a beer, the next morning he took that Yamaha 40 to the motor shop where it was completely rebuilt. It cost us $350 but, I won't ever be in that situation again. We upgraded the trolling motor as well to a stronger gas version. Staying in the bayou after dark is no longer an option for us, of course we are scared when we go out fishing now. However we are well armed with Russian AK-47 rifles, shotguns, and flares, if it ever shows up again it will be the one doing the running not us.